The first step to learning JavaScript is to understand data types. In short, programming languages use logic to manipulate data where the numerous types of data you can have are the data types. The most simple data type is called a string, which we use for writing words, sentences, and characters in JavaScript. We can tell JavaScript that something is a string by wrapping the text inside of the single or double quotation marks or the backtick characters. Another common data type is the number, where JavaScript will naturally recognize numbers as they are, which is easy. So I can have three times three, and JavaScript will know to evaluate that for the result of nine. Quick little interlude, we can save any type of data for later reference by assigning it to a variable. Here I have the number 13, which alone doesn't mean a lot, but I can assign it to a variable called number of eggs using the equals assignment operator. Variable names cannot have spaces in them and upon their first use must be initialized using a declaration keyword. The let declaration is used for variables where the associated data is likely to change and cons for data that will not. Now this is where the data types get interesting. We've seen we can have strings for words and sentences and numbers alongside. But what if we wanted to have a list of elements one after another? For that exact case, we can use the array data type. To create an array, we use the square brackets and we can list out data inside the square brackets using the comma key to separate them. Data in the array can be of any valid data type and each value in the list is located using an index which is just its number order in the list where the indexing starts from zero. If we instead wanted to index data using a key or keyword, we would instead use the dictionary or object data type. We create one using the curly brackets and inside we have what are referred to as key value pairs. Think of a dictionary. We open it to a page, look for a word, perhaps James, and find the definition or value associated with that word. He's an absolute legend in this case. The lookup word is the key and the value is the valid data type associated with the key. The key value pair is separated using the colon inside of the object. And if we wanted to have multiple key value pairs, then we can comma separate them inside of our dictionary. Last but not least, the final data type is called the boolean. For this data type, there are only two valid states, either true or false. So now what if we have some code that that we only want to run sometimes. In these cases, we can use the mighty if statement. To create one, we simply write if, and then right besides it, we use these circular brackets and have a conditional statement within. The conditional statement evaluates to either true or false, and then we use the curly braces and open them across multiple lines, and any code or logic contained within will only be executed when the condition is true. For example, when x is greater than four. And what if we wanted to rerun the same body of code a load of times? Then what do we do? In this case, we use a for loop, run this code for a specific number of times. To create a for loop, we use the for keyword, and then just like the if statement, we use the circular brackets to define the conditions of our for loop. First, we define a counter keyword to track the number of iterations. Let's call it i and start it equal to zero. Then we use a semicolon before the next part of the condition where to end the loop. Let's allow the loop to run while i is less than 20. And then after another semicolon, we can have the final part of the condition. How much to increase our counter i by every single loop? In this case, we'll set the new value of i equal to its old value incremented by one. That's the conditions for our loop done. Then we have the curly brackets and any logic or code contained within will be run 20 times for i starting at zero all the way up to but not including 20. So loops can run a body of code numerous times. But what if we wanted to reuse code only when we need it? For that, we can use a function. To create a function, we use the function declaration, then name the function, and then we use the circular brackets within which we can provide arguments or inputs. 
basically we give the function any information it might need then we use the curly brackets again where inside we place the code we wish to reuse for example I could have a function called multiply numbers and it can expect two numbers as inputs number one and number two and inside we can multiply them and assign the output to a variable called product. We initialize product using the const declaration as the value will be constant and then we can tell JavaScript to talk to us using the console.log statement which basically just prints out the output equal to whatever is passed into the circular brackets in this case the product. We can then invoke the function in three different cases by typing out its name and then the circular brackets in which we pass the arguments and we see the three products output in our console. And that my friends is the introduction. If you want to learn everything there is to know about JavaScript, be sure to check out my longer JavaScript video on YouTube and the even more comprehensive course on Udemy.